to my New Hope Fellowship Tabernacle Church. Good morning. God bless each and every one of you. We both miss and love you guys. We so wish that we was able to be with you all on this morning. But we are trusting and believing in God that he's going to make the way. He's going to make things right. He's going to make it possible so that we all be able to come back together sooner than later. I keep saying any day now, any day now, any day now, any day now, God is going to do what he does best, what he does best and come through just in time. Come through right on time, right on time. We serve a right on time kind of God. We thank God. We thank God for life. We thank God for health. We thank God for strength. We thank God for your participation. We thank God for you tuning in. We thank God for our New Hope family on Instagram and Facebook. We thank God for our family and friends that take out time during their day, during their mornings to tune in, to hear what we have to say. We thank God for our new birth family and our Bishop Tito. He's just ending his uh, virtual service on this morning and we thank God how we enjoyed his message on today. Hopefully you had tuned in and listened to our Bishop Tito and what he had to say on this morning. We thank God for life, health, and strength. We thank God for how he woke us up this morning and started us on our way. He gave us use and activity in our limbs and closed us on our right mind. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you're going to do, God. We pray that um, we pray that the things that come out of our mouth, the words that come out of our mouth, the things that we have to say, that it be a blessing to someone's life, that it be an encouragement to someone's life, that someone will hear and see and be able to know how good God is. He says what he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. We serve an able God. We serve a, learn, a loving God. We serve a God that just does so much. And we're so grateful to him on today. Lord, we appreciate you, God, and we thank you for all that you've done, God. Less than me, God, more you. Allow, allow your work to be done. Allow your will to be done. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We give your name the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you can, if you can, we're going to be coming from the Old Testament. The Old Testament. Pull out your Bibles, your tablets, whatever you read from. But we're going to the Old Testament. We're going to the Old Testament. First Kings. First Kings. First Kings, the 17th chapter in the Old Testament. Old Testament. First Kings, 17th chapter, starting at the 7th verse. First Kings, 17, verse 7 through 15. First Kings. The 17th chapter from verse 7 to verse 15. You know, when I was coming and preparing for this message, uh, this message is the perfect timing of what we're dealing with in this season that uh, so much is going on. The famine and land, if you go into the supermarkets, you see the food is rising. You know, the, all the prices is going up. Things is, it costs so much to live and to breathe. And, 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 and so much uncertainty. There's so much uncertainty. So many people are wondering, you know, what to do. What am I going to do? You know, if it ain't this, is another. There's always something going on during this season. You know, people worrying about whether they're going to be able to stay inside their houses. People worrying about how to pay their rent. They worrying about how to pay their mortgage. They worrying about how they gonna get by. Some people worrying about if they gonna get unemployment. Some people worry about if they gonna get some food stamps. Everybody worrying about what's gonna happen and what's going on. But we got to take this time to trust in God because He's always been there. He's always been there. He said, "I'll be with you to the end of the world." I'm the same God. Today, tomorrow, and forever. The same God I was yesterday. The same God I was with your forefathers. The same God I was with your grandmama. 
with your daddy, with your mama, your great granddaddy. The same God I was with your pastor when you was a child, with your bishop when you was a child. I'm the same God. I'm the same God. If I was with your pastor, if I was with your bishop, your apostle that you grew up under, came up under, I am with you. He said, I will be with you until the end of the world. And on today, I'm here today to encourage you, to let you know, no matter what comes your way, no matter what's, what's, what you're going through, what you're dealing with, God will send a comforter. God will send what you need, even when you feel like you at your last and, 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 you, and, and you don't know how to do it. You know, you done tried all you could, you know, and, and, and everything you was used to ain't the same no more. It ain't the same no more. And you trying to figure out what am I going to do next? What's happening in this phase and stage of my life? Let me tell you, God is still there. He's never left. He never left. No matter how crazy the situation may be. No matter how many people is dying. No matter how much of the pandemic it is. No matter who you hear that got this virus. That God is in the healing business. He's in the healing business. I got family that went in. And they came out. They did not Amen. die. Amen. Everybody Amen. is not dying because of what's going on in this time and this situation. And we're going to go back in this Old Testament and talk about a situation when people thought they was going to die. They thought they was on their last. But God said not so. And we got to trust God to know when he say not so, he mean not so. You ain't got to question it. You ain't got to worry about it. You don't have to have no doubt in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul that God will do exactly what he said. So so my my wife, Pastor k Son, she going to read for me. I need for you to pull out your Bibles, tablets, cell phones, whatever you have to read from. And I need you to read. I need you to read along with me. We're going to 1 Kings. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, starting at the 7th verse. All right, Pastor. Reading from the Amplified Version. After a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him. Arise, go to Sethaphras, which be belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he rose and went to Sathrin. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her, bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have not a loaf baked, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a bottle. See, I gathered it in two sticks that I may go in and bake it for me and my son. That me that we may eat it and die. Stop right there. At this time, this little woman, her life had changed. So much was going on. Her husband wasn't there no more. Her husband had died. So she on her own, her and her young son, they are on their own trying to figure out how we going to make it. The man was there always providing for him. He was going out killing the, the, the animals. He was going out bringing the bread. He was going out bringing in the food. He was providing for them. He was making a way. And now he done died. He's not there no more. And she's trying to figure out how in the world are we going to make it? Elijah's sitting right there. He done went through his last situation with the ravens. And he's trying to figure out where I'm going to go. What I'm going to do. He started praying. And God said, listen, I'm going to set you up to be able to be a setup for this woman. A setup. And he said, I need for you to go and go over here and, 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 and wait over here. And this woman going to find you. And when she found him, he said, this is what I need for you to do. 
Now this woman standing there saying, hold up, bro. You want me to make you something to eat? And I can't even feed me and my son? Like, can you imagine how crazy that is? Somebody can walk up to you and say, well, excuse me, miss. Uh, <laughs> I know you are hungry, but I need you to make something for me. But let me tell you something. The title of my message is, in the nigga time. And I'ma let you know what happens in the nigga time. How many times in your life was something about to happen that was going to go wrong and God stepped in just in the nigga time? Mm -hmm. How many times? How many times? How many times were you about to get into a bad accident and the car ended up flipping another way and you walk away and he stopped it just in the nigga time? Your life could have died. But God will be there right on time. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. But he knows how to show up just in the nick of time. All right, Pastor. Verse 13. Elijah said to her, Fear not. Go and do as you have said. But make me a little cake first and bring it to me. And afterwards, prepare some for yourself and your son. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal shall never waste away or the bottle of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She said to Elijah and she and her son, her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not sent, nor did the bottle of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord, spoke through Elijah. Thank you. I want to talk today on the prophecy, the problem, and the promise. Okay. My title is just in the nick of time, but my three points is based upon the prophecy, the problem, and the promise. See, I need for you to understand on today is that when you're going through some of your hardest times, you know, a lot of times we go to church and we're looking to hear something from the man or woman of God. We're looking to hear a promise. We're looking to hear a prophecy. And, 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 and we figure in the midst of our prophecy and our, pro uh, our, our, our promise that our problem will get fixed. Well, and we got many problems going on in life. We think about right now, we got this pandemic. You know what I mean? The, the food is going crazy. Uh, everything is going up. What they say, but everything going down but the word of God. That's going to stand. And I need you to understand that when God gives you a prophecy and he gives you a word, expect problems to come after it. Because the prophecy cannot be fulfilled unless God can see that your faith is just as strong as the prophecy. People always want to see the prophet come and say, God said he's going to bless you with a new home. God said he's going to bless you with a new job. God bless you, going to bless you with your increase. God going to heal you. God going to turn your situation around. But it's not about your situation turning, but it's about how strong your faith is. Because you know what? In the midst of your prophecy, the problem going to come to see if you can wait to see the prophecy be fulfilled and see the promise be unveiled in your life. Amen. But a lot of times we want the prophecy to come without no issues. Issues got to come. Every single story you can read in the Bible, it comes through problems. This woman right here was praying. And asking God, I need you to make a way because right now I'm about to eat my last meal and die. And die. She, she had no hope. All she could do was just to pray and say, God, if you don't do it, it cannot be done. Only by your hands. So what did God do? He sent the man of God to come there and tell her, listen, if you do what I say, you will never be hungry another day in your life. But it came with some stipulations. And the stipulation was she had to make sure that he had what he needed first. Mm -hmm. You have to take care of 
God's business first. If you take care of God's business, he'll take care of yours. But so many times we be selfish and worrying about what we want. What I want, what I want, what I need, what I want. But we serve a God that if you take care of him, if you bless God, if you bless the prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. And this prophet gave her a reward that she could not have expected. Because she thought she was getting ready to die. And she said, well, how dare this man ask me to come feed him when it ain't enough in here for me and my child. But she forgot the God that she served always show up in the nick of time. Yes, he does. He always shows up in the nick of time. I don't care how crazy the situation is. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how crazy your wife acting. I don't care how crazy your husband acting. I don't care how crazy your kids acting. God going to come up and show up in the nick of time. He going to fix that situation. I don't care how big it is. Whether it's little, whether it's small, no matter what the situation is, God going to fix it. He going to fix it, but we got to trust him. And in the midst of trusting him, we got to believe even in the midst of our problem. Because the prophecy going to come first. And after the prophecy come, let me tell you who else hear the prophecy. The other person that hear the prophecy is the devil. While God is speaking, the devil is still listening. And the devil want to stop you from getting to your promise. So how do he stop you from getting to your promise? He bring you problems. He bring you situations. He bring you trash. He bring you uh, uh, people passing the word. Guess what such and such said. Guess what this one said. They want to throw you off your track. They want to throw you off your seat. They want to throw you out your way. So you cannot get to your promise. I heard Marvin Sapp say, when God speaks to you, the devil here. And then the devil get just a peek of your future. And he see what you get ready to get to. Because he heard the prophecy that came. But the prophecy cannot be filled until he shows it. But you can't get to the promise of the prophecy without going through the mess. So many people want to go and say, all right, God, when I heard what you said and think everything is going to be all hunky-dory, we're going to be tipping through the tulips through the whole time. You ain't going to be tipping through the tulips. You're going to have to go through some stuff. So when you're going through some stuff, what you going to say? Oh, man, the prophecy ain't come yet. I might as well throw in the towel. But listen, let me tell you a little bit more about this story. After the man of God promised this woman what she was going to get and she got it, Guess what happened? Her son died. How many times after God promised you what he going to do, he give you the blessing, it get fulfilled, and something else happened? Like, that. if it ain't one thing, it's another. Like, God, I can't get past from being hungry. Not my son did. And she looking at this prophet like, hold on. What's going on with you? What's happening with you? Why you come here and, and bother my house? My house was cool. We was chilling. We are going to die and be happy. And, and the man said, listen, don't you worry about a thing because I serve a God that works and moves just in the nick of time. And he told her, he said, hey, hey, hold on. Don't worry about nothing. I got this. I got this. So he said, check it out. Check it out. Give me the son. Give me the boy. And we're going to make something happen. And he took that boy and he went back to uh, where he was dwelling at in her house. And he started to pray. And he looked up to the God that I serve. And to the God that he's serving. He said God. You got to handle this. You got to deal with this. Only you can make this happen again. You know sometimes it's a shame. But God got to prove himself to people more than once. He said if I did it before. I'll do it again. So why he got to prove himself to you? Why he got to keep on showing you that I'm the same God that I did it once? And I'm the same God that I keep on doing it. Can't nothing stop the God that we serve. He too strong. He too powerful. He got too much going on himself. How many times in your life have you seen and known that you felt like it, you was at your very end? You felt like it, it was nothing else that you can do. And God showed up. I had an aunt that went into the hospital a few weeks ago. Dealing with this pandemic. And I knew without a shadow of doubt in my mind that God was going to bring her out. 
Even though they said these people was dying and the cases in the city of Philadelphia was rising, but I trust in the God of my salvation and I spoke, I spoke out of my mouth. My wife spoke out of her mouth and we said that she was going to get up and walk and that she shall live and not die. And we got to trust God because see, when, when the problems come and the issues come and these situations happen in our lives, all people want to throw in the towel. They, they let their problems become bigger than their promise. Do not let your problem become bigger than your promise. Because the promise is what you got to hold in your heart. And you got to trust to say, if God said it, it got to come to pass. God don't make a promise and not keep it. If God made a promise, he'll keep it. You know, sometimes your parents say, I'm going to go get you something. And if the money ain't right, they can't do it. Sometimes kids won't promise their parents, I'm going to get on honor road. And what they do, still go to school and act the fool. <laughs> but you know what? God does not forget his. Your supervisor might have promised you a promotion on your job. And at the last minute when the pandemic happened, they let you go. People will let you down. People will not keep their promises. People will fail you. But Jesus never fails. God never fails. I don't care what the situation is. When God make a promise to you and he prophesied to your life and God sent a word into your life, all you got to do is hold out and hold on. Because you know what? Your time ain't God's time. And your ways ain't God's ways. But if you hold on and you hold out, God going to show up just in the nick of time. But you got to believe. You can't give up. You can't give in. You can't allow your problems to become bigger than your promise. Because after the prophecy come, God promised that he will show up just like he said he would. But you got to believe. And he said to that woman, he said, now by this I know that thou art the man of God and that the word of the Lord is in truth. Ain't nothing that God going to send to you or say to you that won't be the truth. Because people going to lie. There's a whole bunch of people out there lying. There might be some preachers out there lying. It, hey, all kind of people out there lying. But the truth is in the word of the Lord. What God said, it will come to pass. What God said, it will work out. And God said he will never bring us into a situation and not protect us. So even while we dealing in this pandemic, even while we dealing in this crisis, God said he will take care of us. We are his children. We are the select. And listen, I encourage you. Listen, if you don't know God, ain't no more than a greater time too. Because you need to see him. God can't uh, 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 make a promise with you and you ain't connected to him. You know, because he shine on the just as well as the unjust, but he takes care of his own. And if you're not a part of his own, then he can't take care of you. Just like God took care of this woman. Not only did he do it once, but he did it twice. Because when she thought she was getting ready to die, when she thought she was down to her legs, God showed up just on time. When she thought her son was about to die and she was about to lose all that she had, God showed up just on time. He will show up just in the nick of time, but it's based upon your faith. It's based upon where you believe. You know, faith without hope is dead and that hope is built on your belief. Because when you believe and you got the hope and you got that faith, the grain of a mustard seed, what he said, you can move mountains. You can make things happen. But you got to continue to believe in spite of what the situation looked like, in spite of what you're going through. Even if you might have lost your job in this situation, God is going to take care of you. We get so caught up in the problem that we forget what the promise is. And the number one promise is God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that I will be with you until the end of the world. He said, I'll be with you till the end of the world. That's the greatest promise that he gave to us through his son. That he said he will be with us. So in order for him to continue being with us, 
We got to stick with him even in the midst of our problem. And this is one of the greatest problems that we have ever had to endure in the history of this world. This is one of the greatest problems that we ever had to endure in the history of this world. But we got to continue to believe that the prophecy that was spoken years ago that God said he will provide, that he going to keep his promise, those three P's, prophecy, problem, and promise. You got to believe those three. That's what's going to help to carry you through this season. That's what's going to help carry you through this pandemic, through this hard time, through this struggle of a time. Is that the prophecy that came, we got to go through the problem in the midst of the prophecy. And that the promise is going to, and it has to be fulfilled. But you cannot give up. You cannot throw in the towel. I don't care how hard it get. I don't care who done died. I don't care who's sick. I don't care how crazy your money is. I don't care how crazy uh, your housing situation is. I don't care how crazy your may act. I don't care how crazy the situation is. You have to continue to trust God and to know that he will show up just in the nick of time. You know, so many times, because of our problems, we allow it to dictate our attitude. But our attitude has to be higher than our altitude. Because sometimes our altitude get just this high. And once it get that high, then our attitude start to get frustrated. But you got to push. I heard my, my girls back on uh, Martin back in the day, Pam and Gina sung that song. They said, push, you got to push. You got to push, you got to push until you get it right. You got to push, you got to keep on pushing. I don't care what it is. If you keep on pushing, you will make it long enough to make it to the promise. You know, I like to equate it to how the track stars deal with the situation. For my page. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it. When those track stars start going through their situation and they running, and especially the ones that, that run the long distance. And you know, you start it off, you're like, boom, you take off and you're moving so fast and you're moving so fast. And it seems like the closer you get to the finish line, the tighter your legs get, the tighter your feet get, the tighter your back get, your arms start hurting more. But you just got to keep on running. You got to keep on running. You got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on running. You got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on running. Because if you finish, you will get the promise. But so many times before we get the promise, we too close to allowing our attitude to allow us not to finish. And it's disappointing. God is not happy when we don't finish, because there's people out there watching you run your race. They watching you run your race. And when you don't finish, when you give up, when you throw in the towel, do you know how many people are affected by you not completing your assignment? How many people are affected by you not finishing your race? By you not hanging in there? By you not showing them that if you hang in there, that God will show up. He will show up just in the nick of time. I don't care how crazy, how crazy the gas and the water. All our bills is just totally out of whack right now. You know, because maybe your money just ain't what it used to be. And your situation ain't what it used to be. But I'm telling you, if you hang in there, if you hold on, if you hold out, God will show up. He'll show up just on time. He'll show up just on time. He's never late. He's never late. He's always on time. He will show up just when you need him. The song said back in the day, he showed up just when I needed him the most. He showed up when I needed him the most. Not when I needed him the less. 
You know, sometimes we feel like that's our most, but God don't realize. You don't realize that God don't feel like it's your most. And see, God knows best. Oh, God, I just can't take it no more. Oh, he, no, you can take it some more because he won't put more on you than what you can bear. He, that was one of the other promises. He said, I will not put more on you than what you can bear. I will not put more on you than what you can handle. Even when you think you ain't got enough food, I'll send somebody in the middle of nothing and show up at your door with a box of food. When you think you ain't got enough money, I had somebody to drop some money in your cash at. When you think you ain't got enough money, I had somebody just to come by and put some money in your mailbox. Send you an unexpected check. Send you things that you just don't expect because he show up the nigga time. God don't give you, don't send a signal and say, oh, here I come. Oh, I'm on the way. Oh, watch out. No, he shows up when he want to because his time is not our time. His ways is not our ways. And we just had to prepare ourselves that say, God, no matter what, I trust you. God, no matter what, I trust you. I can't do nothing else but to trust you. I can't do nothing else but to hold on. I can't do nothing else but to stand by and watch you do what you do best. That's all I can do. But what I cannot do is give up. What I cannot do is throw in the towel. What I cannot do is lose faith. I got to hold on. God needs you to hold on and believe that he will show up just in the nick of time. He will show up and he will show up and he will give you double for your trouble. He'll give you triple for your weight. But you got to trust in him. You got to believe in him to know that he will come through. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Are you going to trust in God or are you going to worry about the devil? We got to trust in God on today. So I urge of you, I beg of you, when you got a moment of free time, read this whole book of 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. When you feel like your faith is starting to get a little weary, when it seems like all kinds of craziness is happening in your life, take out time and read this chapter about this widow woman. You see, this, this is like for the single mothers especially. The single mothers, the single mothers, especially the ones that have, have, have lost their loved ones. And they're not around no more. And they're on their own trying to make it happen. You trust and believe in God that no matter how crazy, how bad, how out of pocket, just how just uh, it goes on in your life. That God will show up just in the nick of time. I know sometimes it's just so hard because you sit there and you think, oh God, what am I going to do? What you're going to do is trust in God. Trust in God. Have faith in God. And believe that he is going to make the way plain. He's going to do it. He's going to make it happen. He's going to come through. He said, I promise you I'll be with you even until the end of the world. So on today, I, I beg of you and I ask of you. And if you know somebody else who their faith is wavering, who their belief is wavering, and they feel like they're at their last, you tell them to read this first book of Kings. And to show how God, not only will he come through once, but he'll keep doing it again. We just got to keep believing. And God sends the men and women of God, just like he did with Elijah, to encourage you that God will provide. But in the midst of your waiting, continue to take care of God's business. See, that woman, in spite of how bad her situation was, and what she was going through, she obeyed the word of God. And because of her faithfulness and because of her obedience, God showed up. Listen, I can only imagine if the prophet would have told her to make me something to eat and she didn't do it. 
she might have just died by not being obedient, by not listening to the man of God. But because of her obedience, God showed up because of her trust, her faith, and what the word of the Lord said, she found it to be true. And because of that truth, God not only gave her food for the rest of her life, but she saved her, he saved her son's life. And we got to trust God and believe that, Lord, if we trust in you and we believe in you and we continue to keep our faith strong, that you will provide. So I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for taking time out of your day, out of your morning to come hear what I had to say. And I pray that you will hold this in your heart and in your mind to know that I have to continue to trust God. I have to continue to believe in the word because it's truth in the word of God. People lie. But it's truth in the word of God and that God said he will show up in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time when it seems like you at your very wits. He will show up just in the nick of time. I pray God speed over your life that God will continue to bless you and keep you. Pray that you stay strong. Remember to keep supporting us at newhopeftc.org. New Hope on Facebook, Instagram, New Hope FTC on Twitter, and especially New Hope FTC on YouTube. If you're not a subscriber, I'm asking you on today, if you're not subscribed to New Hope FTC, if you're not subscribed to New Hope FTC, I need you to go on YouTube and subscribe, like, hit the bell. We need your support. We will grow because of your support. If you want to be a blessing, you can go to our New Hope Cash App and be a blessing to our ministry. Because ministry still continue. That's New Hope uh, FTC uh, dollar sign on Cash App. That's capital N, capital H, capital F, capital T, capital C, church on Cash App. We pray that you be a blessing to us, and we pray that you help us continue to be a blessing unto others. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. This is my prayer.